younger brother and I have lived near the desert our whole lives. We're extremely experienced campers. I'm 20, and I've never believed in anything paranormal until last night. But my brother, he's always been able to see and sense gents. They're basically demons. We always go to the same place when we want to camp with minimum effort, and the beginning of our day was completely normal. But the closer we got to our destination, the more I noticed my brother's mood shifting. When I asked him what was wrong, he shrugged me off, just said to keep driving. I felt fine when we got there, but my brother was unusually quiet. It was the afternoon, and we planned to leave at midnight. The heat was intense, so we set up under a few trees, near some water. In the Middle East, it's said that that's where gins live, but I didn't believe that. As we set up our tent, it fought us. We would secure one end and another end would pop up. When finished, it looked as if something was pushing on it, which is something neither of us have ever experienced, not even during a sandstorm. When my brother feels a presence, he gets extremely unlucky. After almost dropping a box of coals on his foot, he spilled a Coke on his phone, smashed his elbow, and cut his finger. He was digging in his bag when he found an unsheathed knife, but he said it felt like someone actually pushed his finger into it. This was all in a matter of hours, and it made us feel uneasy. Suddenly, a random couple appeared out of nowhere, saying they were stuck in the sand and needed help. We were driving a land cruiser. They said that they had a Nissan Altima, so we didn't expect to encounter many issues, but we were wrong. We dug them out easily, but they somehow got stuck again as we pushed them, even though there was plenty of space available to grip. Later, my brother said that's when he really started to feel an evil presence, but he didn't want to freak me out. We ended up towing the couple out of the sand, but it was much harder than it should have been. Our strap pulled off their bumper, and we almost got stuck ourselves. When we returned to camp, Everything became unusually quiet. The only sound was that of our rapidly dying fire. As we sat down to eat, my brother suddenly grabbed my hand, and he said we needed to go as quickly as possible. The fear in his voice and on his face were obvious. He didn't feel safe. So we prayed to ease our minds, but it only angered whatever was there. We quickly finished eating, but I was only humoring my brother until I suddenly had a nagging feeling that we should leave. It hit me like a wave, and I said so. We started packing. That's when we heard something on the opposite side of the small pond. I can only describe it as the sound of death. It lasted for several minutes. I felt like I was having a heart attack. After remaining frozen for a few minutes, we drove closer so we could look around with the headlights. But things got really crazy once the screaming stopped. At first we heard twigs snapping and footsteps all around us. Then we saw shadows behind the trees. I tried everything to get those shadows to change shape. I walked around the trees, moved the lights, but nothing happened. It looked and felt like people were staring at us. We felt like we weren't alone and that the entities weren't friendly. We also noticed three cats huddled behind our car, away from the trees. But thankfully, they left as we started reversing. They looked terrified, and they were staring at the trees. It felt like whatever was there was getting closer. But luckily, we were able to pack up quickly. All was silent as we did so. I was most terrified while driving back to the main dirt path. I could tell the steering was off like it was fighting against me, but that stopped the second we were on the highway. The sound of snapping twigs still surrounded us, and it was loud enough to be heard over the car. The path was covered in birds. They just stood there, staring until we got close. Then they walked away. My brother said to keep looking straight ahead. Under no circumstances was I to look through his window. We were in a part of the desert where we had to drive through the whole of inaccessible areas to get onto the highway. 
There were no other people around. The only thing we saw was an abandoned Toyota Helix, positioned behind a small sand dune. Hidden by the trees, but it was far enough from our campsite to be ruled out as the source of anything we'd heard. As we were nearing the exit, we saw a deer standing in the middle of the path, staring directly at us. In 16 years where we're from, I've only seen one deer, and that was someone's pet. I was in shock. The deer wouldn't move until we were close enough to smell it. Then, it slowly walked away while looking right at us. We quickly drove past it. My brother gasped before sternly saying to keep my eyes on the road. As we got on the highway, I asked what he kept seeing, and he reluctantly described large figures around us any time we went around a bend. They were either pointing at us or ahead of us. I'm glad he didn't tell me until later. We still hadn't encountered anyone, but we heard sounds all around us. I was thrilled to finally see the exit, but that quickly faded when we saw another deer standing in the middle of the road. This one slowly walking away, but still looking at us. Only this time, it looked more like a kangaroo mixed with a deer. It had milky eyes, looked rotten, but I didn't care. I just stepped on the gas and was glad it got out of the way in time. At the exit, I was about to turn right when my brother said to turn left instead, towards a small town. He saw another line of figures pointing ahead of us and didn't think that we would make it home in one piece if we followed their directions. The further we drove, the less we felt like we were being watched. I was distraught. My brother said that that's because we were alone, The djinn wanted to cause us harm. They get you in rural places, so you're forced to stop. And then they can do whatever they want. That's why there were so many animals on our path. He also said that they cause bad luck. He'd felt them from the second we entered the desert. Before this, I always just dismissed his feelings as him being afraid. I can excuse the sounds, shadows and the feelings of being watched, but I can't excuse the two deer or the car randomly fighting against me. It's safe to say we're not camping there anymore, and I'll never again dismiss my brother when it comes to his sense of these things. I'm just so thankful we made it home safely. This happened to me several years ago, back when I was a teenager. I've never really told many people about it, but the memory has always stuck with me. Some background, I've always believed in paranormal. I've experienced other things, but nothing quite to this extent. I grew up in Arkansas, and as a family in a smaller city, we spent a lot of time outdoors, fishing, hunting, camping, etc., I was about 16 when my dad and I decided to go hunting on some land owned by a longtime family friend. I grew up hunting out there and was familiar with the majority of the property. My dad had been out prior and scoped a few good spots to sit and wait. He took me to a dry creek that I wasn't entirely familiar with. It had a raised island in the middle of it. It was like four or so feet higher than the creek bed. There was a fallen tree on top of it. He had me sit on the stump. He left me there and went to whatever location he'd picked for himself. I waited there for a while, not really hearing or seeing anything. I eventually laid my gun down on the ground at my feet, stood up to stretch a little. I remember suddenly feeling a little odd. While I was stretching, I started hearing thuds. It sounded like a horse running, or a deer maybe, but... It sounded heavier. I could hear whatever it was, but couldn't see anything. I was in the middle of the woods, and I heard no leaves being rustled around or anything. Only the thuds. Before I could react, I felt a hard shove on the center of my chest, and I fell backwards off of the little hill that I was on. It pushed the breath out of me and scared me to death. After the hit... There was no more noise. 
Nothing running away, just silence. The entire experience freaked me out. And of course, when I yelled and finally found my dad, he didn't believe me. Has anyone else experienced anything similar to this? I've seen and heard things before, but I've never been touched or hit. What could this be?